Many people struggle with the Bible. They know the Bible is valuable, they know it's important, but they're not sure where to start, they get stuck somewhere in the middle, and as a result, they end up missing out on the life-changing power of God's Word. And Scripture is full of all kinds of stories that tell this one story. God is a rescuer. God is a redeemer. God is a provider. God is a deliverer. Hey, good morning. Hey, we're going to do something a little bit uh, different this morning. Uh, that was a great song that we just sang, wasn't it? I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in, a, in just a minute. But here's what I thought we should do. Um, intimacy with God is a really cool thing. Because when he shares himself with us, we get to share ourselves with him. And that is what we were created to do. And I mean, that's what eternity is going to be like. So just over the next 30 seconds, if we can just, um, I'll tell you what, put me, pause that clock and um, put me on the clock for 30 seconds. Lower the lights just a little bit. We're not going to do anything weird. But if there's anything just in that uh, intimate moment um, that you've had with God, I just want to give you 30 seconds to just kind of connect with, uh, connect with Father. Sometimes things bubble up in our lives that we just want to share with them. And so, hey, man, 30 seconds, go. It's all yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay, so, uh, okay, you can start that clock, and uh, here we go. Hey, I do want to, here's what I would tell you, is that over 2,000 years ago, what you need to know what was happening around this week is Jesus and his disciples, along with all of the Israelites from all the Jewish people from all over Israel, were making their pilgrimage. They were making their pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. It's going to be the last one that Jesus celebrates here on this side of eternity. It's going to be the last one that he celebrates on earth uh, until he returns. And so Jesus and his disciples are making that. Now, there were some There were some uh, lyrics, there were some lines in that song that speaks directly to the uh, what has become known as Holy Week. You, I don't know if you remember this, but we just sang a line that if the rocks cry out, then so will I. Awesome. Okay, so Jesus is on his triumphal entry over two thousand years ago on today, which became known as Palm Sunday, and the religious types show up and they're like, Jesus. If you don't tell these people to stop saying Hosanna, this isn't cool. And he says, hey, even if the rocks, or if they don't, if they don't praise, praise me, even the rocks would cry out. So if the rocks would cry out, I guess I would say, then so will I. You know, and then in that lyric, in that, uh, in that song that we just sang, he talked about how Jesus knew that he, he created the hill that one day he would be crucified on. It's pretty powerful, isn't it? Yeah. Well, hey, man, 2,000 years ago, Jesus was entering Jerusalem on a Sunday like this. It would become known as Palm Sunday. And uh, if in your study, if you're in your pursuit with God, and you just find yourself in a season, you're like, hey, I don't really know where I should be at in the Bible, and I don't know, man, I don't know what I should be studying. And if you're just looking for a place to grab onto, what I would tell you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, the Gospels is a great place for you to lock into. And uh, I would just head straight for Holy Week. I would start with a triumphal entry because that is the pinnacle of the Christian faith, uh, where Jesus Christ dies on the cross for our sins, and three days later, now that was on a Friday, okay, in between Sunday and Friday, he turns over the temple, that's pretty, pretty, pretty riveting, Um, Thursday, he is betrayed in the garden, and Friday, he's executed, one of my all-time favorite videos. Uh, in fact, you guys should go. If you've not seen this, you need, you need to go check this out. Uh, it's by an African-American minister. He just says it in a way that I can't. Um, he says it was Friday. But what they didn't know is Sunday's coming. It's Holy Week, man. 
Eventually it's going to be Good Friday and we can celebrate the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. But I want to tell you something. Just like this guy would in the video, only way cooler than I can with a great big voice. He says, but it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. All right, hey man, we're, uh, we're going to dive into our, uh, our series today where we're talking about the good book, 40 chapters uh, of the Bible revealing the Bible's biggest ideas. And today's idea is so huge. This is so huge that there is no way and we're not even going to try to cover all that this whole thing encompasses. But you will see this week's big idea on the top of your outline this morning. It's the big idea of following Jesus. There is so much we could talk about there. I'm, I'm jealous that Darren has five chapters in these five days, and I have 26 minutes. And so there are going to be some things that I share today that you may not see on the screen that you want to write down. I want to encourage you to do that. And uh, so with that, here we go. Following Jesus. We're going to be talking about following Jesus. And I'm just going to start right out of the gate. And if you're taking notes, you're going to love this because we get to it right away. It is following Jesus is for everyone. Following Jesus is for everyone. That is a really big statement. It's a bigger deal than what you think it is. And let me explain why. Has anybody in here, and you don't have to raise your hands, you don't have to stand up and say, that was me, but have you ever been told because you don't act a certain way? Have you ever been asked because you don't dress a certain way? Have you ever been uh, made to feel like you don't fit because maybe you don't have enough money, like you don't belong? There are places in our country yet today, and there are places all over the world that if you don't dress a certain way, if you don't act a certain way, if you don't behave a certain way, you're told that you don't belong. And there have been people in their lives who have been made to feel a certain way because they've been told, I'm sorry, you don't belong. Which makes this whole idea that following Jesus is for everyone a really big deal. Let me just kind of give you a few examples of how sometimes we're made to feel like we don't belong. I, uh, I was doing a little research, and you laugh about this next one, but the, the first one's funny too. The Red Hat Society. I love going out to eat in Casper, but it gets a whole lot more fun when these girls are there. The Red Hat Society. Check them out. Now, let me tell you a little bit about the Red Hat Society. First of all, it's for ladies only. So, fellas, we're not welcome. But if you're not 50 years old and you're a woman and you want to be a part, you're barely welcome. And here's what I mean by that. You have to be 50 years old to get the red hat and the purple dress. If you are 50 years old in here today, you can have the red hat and you can have the purple dress. Welcome to the club. But if you're a woman and you're not 50 years old and you want to be a part, You join the Red Hat Society there. Oh, keep them up, man. I mean, we don't want to shortchange anybody on this deal. And you want to join, you get a pink hat. You join to join the Red Hat, but you get a pink one. And you can't even wear a purple dress. You have to wear a lavender dress. And what that means is, is it's okay for you to be here, but you don't belong yet. Like you're seen, you're tolerated, but you don't belong yet. Because there's this line, it's like, hey man, I'm sorry, you don't belong. And you've got an idea that you want to share? That's okay, sweetie, one day you'll be 50 like the rest of us. (laughs) It's crazy. The whole point is we've all been told That, man, maybe you don't act a certain way. Maybe you don't smell a certain way. Maybe you don't dress a certain way and you don't belong. It just makes makes following Jesus for everybody a really big deal. Following Jesus is for everyone. Now, ladies, if you're thinking that you're a little picked on this morning, don't sweat it because we're going to pick on us guys too. We are just a couple weeks away from one of the greatest golf tournaments in the history of our country. In fact, Jim Nance and his Golden Pipes have been all over CBS during March Madness, which is awesome. And uh, he has been promoting the Masters. Come see Bubba. Come see Tiger. Come see a bunch of other guys. I don't know who they are. (laughs) And they're all chasing a green jacket. Like they're obsessed with this green jacket. 
Now, here's what you may not know about Augusta National. Up until 2012, if you were a woman, you weren't allowed there. In fact, everybody who has a green jacket right there either paid a whole lot of money for it or they won it. But the point is being, if you don't have a PGA card, like if you don't have enough money to buy a green jacket, I'm sorry, you don't belong here. Now you can pay your hard-earned money and you can come watch these guys, but you're just here. You're, you, you might be a kind of a part of it, but you don't belong here, which just makes, again, the idea that following Jesus is a really big deal. Now, here's a kick in the teeth, and this is true, and I just pray that it is never true of us. And so, so I, I got to say this. I have been in churches. I've been in churches. I've been in churches where people have looked at people who sin differently than they do, dress differently than they do, talk differently than they do, and they said, I'm sorry, you don't belong here. Is that what Jesus told you? Is that what he told me? No, listen, let that not be said of us. Following Jesus is for everybody. If somebody shows up wearing a baseball hat, don't tell them to take it off. It may be their last ditch chance. They might know their life is screwed up. They might be here looking for Jesus. And if they meet somebody that says, oh, in order to belong here, you got to take your hat off. I'm just going to say it. You're going to get mad at me. I don't care. That's crap. Don't do it. And I'm not saying that you ever have. I'm just saying don't do it. Because following Jesus is for everybody. That is a really big deal. Let me tell you who following Jesus is for. Following Jesus is for the person who cheated on you. Following Jesus is for the person who divorced you. Following Jesus is for the kid who's not following along with you. Following Jesus is for that dad who never paid attention to you or treated you like garbage. Following Jesus is for that mom who might have yelled or wasn't the motherly figure you hoped she would be. Following Jesus is for her. Following Jesus is for the poor. Following Jesus is for the rich. Let me just say something. Following Jesus is for all of us. Following Jesus is for your neighbor. Following Jesus is for that person that irritates you. Following Jesus is for that person who has gossiped about you. Following Jesus is for that person who has lied about you. Are you starting to see what a big deal Jesus is? That Jesus following him is for everyone. He's fo- following Jesus is for that person that tweaks you. Following Jesus... I want to make sure I get this one right. There we go. Following Jesus is for a God-fearing, gun-toting, Second Amendment supporter. Now that ought to get me an amen in Wyoming. <laughs> but following Jesus is also for a God-fearing, country-loving, gun-control activist, too. You see, following Jesus is for Black Lives Matter. Following Jesus is for Blue Lives Matter because, in God's eyes, we all matter. Following Jesus is for an immigrant and for a natural born citizen. Following Jesus is for an Islamic radical who probably right now has put a black hood over his head and is waving a black flag with Muhammad's name on it. Following Jesus is for that person as much as following Jesus is for Christians. Now, following Jesus is for everybody sounds good and it plays good, but when you start putting handles on who following Jesus is for, you, you want to know what happens? We start to mutter, mm, maybe not that one, Lord. Mm. What did we talk about last week? If you're muttering... Muttering is the first step towards God doing a new work, revealing his love in your life. 
He's trying to do a new work in your life. Following Jesus is for everybody. Now, you won't find this thing on your outline, but it should have been on your outline. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Is that this is bonus content. Here we go. Following Jesus is the only way to heaven. Following Jesus is the only way to heaven. We live in a post-Christian, we live in a post-modern world where people believe that truth is relative, meaning I think that this is, I think this is what is true. And we've got to walk around our silly country thinking, well, okay, maybe, how'd you get there? Like, why do you I walk around validating that? Listen, when you say that Jesus is the only way to heaven, people will find that offensive. But it doesn't make it any less true. Listen, if the Son of God clothed himself in flesh and he's been talking for the longest time, hey, you know, I'm going to die on the cross for everybody's sins and three days later I'm going to raise from the dead and then he goes and does it. I think you can believe what he's saying. And what did he say? He said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth. Okay, no one gets to the Father. Okay, no one gets to the Father except through who? Except through Jesus. Nobody gets there except through Jesus. So I'm just saying, when we talk about following Jesus, what you have to say here today is he is the only way to heaven. And so if that is offensive, what I want to encourage everybody here today to do is it's okay being offensive. However, you don't have to say it offensively. Just let it stand for itself. Peter says, I think it's in 1 Peter 5, 7, he says something like this. Always be prepared in season and out of season to give a reason for the hope that you have. This is, we get opportunities each and every day to talk about Jesus. We get opportunities each and every day to hear what other people believe. Listen to them. But the danger in just listening to them is somehow elevating that what they believe is more important than what we believe. And there is a true tendency in the church today to just kind of shrink back and say, okay, hey, I heard you out, hoping that they're going to hear us out. Go ahead and listen, but don't shy away from, hey, let me tell you, man, it's Easter, it's Holy Week. Let me tell you why I worship Jesus. And just one more thing, I believe he's the only way to heaven. Well, that offends me. Hey, man, I'm so sorry. I didn't make the rules. I'm just part of, I'm just part of the life here. And you let God take care of the rest. But see, I didn't, that may have been offensive to somebody, but I didn't say it in a tone that was offensive. I wasn't Bible thumping anybody there. I wasn't beating anybody down. I was just telling you what I believe. Following Jesus is for everyone. And I would tell you that following Jesus is the only way to heaven. Now, I want to take us back to the scriptures. And, man, we're going to just kind of ping around. And so you don't, have to, you don't have to open them up. But if you want to find these stories in further detail, again, go to the Gospels. Go to Matthew. Go to Mark. Go to Luke. And go to John. So I want to take you back to that moment that Jesus is on the seashore. And he gets in a boat with the disciples. Specifically, Peter and his brothers are standing there. And they go out and they catch a boatload of fish that they hadn't caught all night. And Jesus, uh, when that happens, they freak out. They're like, oh my goodness, we've never seen anything like this. And in that moment, Jesus says, follow me. What's he say? He says, follow me. And what did they do? They followed him. They followed him. This is the third thing I want to talk about. Is that following Jesus is a journey and not a destination. Because when he said, follow me, what did they do? They followed him, right? I'm just going to keep drilling down on this. They followed him. Did you notice what Jesus didn't do? Jesus didn't say, hey, you know what? Before we go and do this, we need to say a prayer. Like one day they're going to call this thing the sinner's prayer. And after you say this prayer, you're good. You can follow me. I am hard-pressed, it's not in my translation, and I've read enough translation that I know it's not in your translation. Nowhere in Scripture are you going to find Jesus saying the sinner's prayer. It's not in there. That thing is man-made. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just, I mean, because I've done this before. I think I did it last week. This isn't bad. But what I am saying is it's, it's not in the Bible. What did Jesus say? How did he know that they were following him? Because they followed him. Like, Peter, like Jesus didn't say, hey, Peter, um, we're going to say this prayer is going to be known as a sinner's prayer, and then you're good. And Peter didn't say, cool, Jesus, hey, man, I'm, I'm good now. 
Next time you're in the area, hop in my boat and let's go fishing again. He didn't say that. Like when he called Matthew, like when he invited Matthew to follow him in the tax collector booth, he didn't say, hey, yo, Matt, you want to follow me? Yeah, what do I got to do? I'll just say this prayer. Cool. Hey, Jesus, next time you're by, hey, I'll give you a little deal on the taxes. It won't be as bad next time. I'm good. See, following Jesus isn't a destination. It's a journey. Following Jesus is a journey. It's not a destination. But there is a temptation in our American culture to treat the starting line like it's the finishing line. When it's only the starting line. What happened when Jesus said, follow me? They followed And guess what happened if they would have never followed? Peter would have never gotten to see Jesus turn water into wine. He would have never gotten to walk on water. He would have never seen Jesus heal the blind, heal the lame. He would have never seen that. But most importantly, if he had never followed Jesus, He would have never known what really mattered to God. He would have never known who he is in God's eyes. He would have never known what he was created for. He would have never had the opportunity to be with, to learn from, to think like, and to become like Christ in the fact that his heart wants nothing like, wants everything Jesus wanted the Father more than he wanted anything else. And being with Jesus, following Jesus, showed these guys what it meant to be a follower of his, which was to want the Father's desire above all else. The reason I'm saying this is because I don't want anybody in here today to confuse the fact that you prayed a 90-second prayer one time with that being a follower of Jesus. Because there are plenty of people who show up on the weekends and I'm just letting the Holy Spirit speak to you at this point. There are plenty of people who show up and believe they're followers of Jesus because they they prayed a 90 second prayer. But when you look at their life, nothing has changed from that moment. They still live for themselves. Nothing has changed. They still want their own stuff. They still want their own ways. They don't know who Jesus is. They don't know what his voice sounds like. And again, I'm not condemning. I'm just saying there's a difference between what a follower of Jesus is and what a destination is. Jesus is leading us towards a destination. But let's not treat following Jesus like we've arrived. Because none of us have arrived until that day when he calls us home. So, again... If you're not interested in obeying his commands, you're probably treating Jesus like a destination. And that's just adding him to all the other things that you've done or that you're doing. Following Jesus is different. Following Jesus, he's leading your following. He's leading, we're trusting. He's leading, we're obeying. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And I don't want to give the devil any foothold here. And so some of you are thinking, man, am I, am I a destination or am I a follower? What am I? So the Bible, again, Jesus doesn't leave any stone unturned, as it were. So let me just help some folks out here. If you want God's best for you, if you want to follow Jesus, if you wake up and you're following Jesus, like you want to follow him, that's an indication you haven't treated him as a destination, that you're actually a follower of his. But he goes on, even in the scriptures, and I won't put this up, I think it's John 14, 23. Did I get it right? Turn it around, Vanna. There we go. Jesus replied, anybody who, who loves me will obey Cool, I just wanted to make sure I hadn't put you to sleep yet. Anybody who loves me will obey my teaching. It doesn't say anybody who loves me will be perfect at obeying my teaching. It just said everybody who loves me will obey my teaching. What they're going to do is you're going to do your best. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect at it. It just means that's your deepest heart's desire to honor God in and all things. If that's you, you're following Jesus, okay? But if you just prayed a 90-second prayer and there's nothing different about your life, Okay, 
that 90-second prayer reflected the proper attitude and understanding of your need for God, now it's just time to kick in and follow through on your decision to follow him. Because it's the follow-through on the decision to follow him that makes you a follower of his. And you'd start any time. In fact, what I would tell you is at any time if the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart over the next six minutes and 50 seconds, and he's, that is Jesus inviting you to follow him. And all you have to do is follow him. And you want to know how will we know if you're following him? You'll be here next week. How do we know if you're following him? You'll get a part of a community group, which is to do life with people. It's to do life with Jesus. Because when the disciples did life with Jesus, when we walk with Jesus, when we follow Jesus, we become more like him in our desires and what we want and what we think and how we act. How will we know? Everything I just said. God's church will grow. Amen? Awesome. All right. I love this next one, man. I absolutely love this because there is something, uh, there are many things, but there is a lot of stuff about God and his word that, um, that we love. And there's some things that are bigger than what we think they are that maybe that we don't pay as much attention to. And this is going to be one of them. I want you to think about how amazing God is. Because in his book, in his holy Bible, there are actually stories of people who reject him. Now, I want you to think about how profound that is for just a minute. Some of you guys are here in sales. Some of you guys here are in sales. And so what is your job? It is to get the sale. It's to get the customer. And so what do we do in sales? We do everything humanly possible to convince somebody that they should align themselves with us. And what is the biggest omission that we leave out of that pitch. Let, don't let me tell you about, I'm not gonna tell you about the people who have rejected me and why do we do that? Because we're afraid that they might reject us too. But God knows that his love is so good. He knows that the life now with him is so rewarding and the life to come is so rewarding he puts it in here that people reject him. And the next blank on your outline says this, that following Jesus is for everyone, but not everyone chooses to follow. Now listen, I say this all the time. In fact, I think this is really the only, I think this is, only the, this is truly the only accurate using of the word awesome. I've seen some great slam dunks in my time. I am vertically challenged, so I can't ever do that. Oh, no, I am vertically challenged. I can get about like two inches off the ground. <laughs> it takes a lot to move six foot four, 250. I'm mean, just saying. All right, but I've seen some cool things, and people want to say, awesome. Oh, that's really cool, man. I just think that God's really, he's the only thing that's awesome, only one that's awesome. But I think it's awesome because he puts this in there. And I want you to turn in your Bibles now to Mark chapter 10. And we're going to just look at this quick story, and then I'm going to wrap things up here. Following Jesus for everybody, but not everybody chooses to follow. See, in Mark chapter 10, verse 17, is coming up on the screen. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and he fell on his knees before him. Hey, good teacher, he asked, what must I do to have eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not. You shall not. We got to go back or we're all going to fail this next one. You shall not. Awesome. You shall, uh, whoa, now we got to go to the next one. There, you shall not, you shall not honor your teacher, he declared. I have kept all of these since I was a little boy. So you got to get the understanding. This guy is jacked. This is somebody who loves God, who his entire life has said, God, I want a relationship with you. That's, in fact, in our church circles, we would label this dude a good dude. Okay, we'd be like, man, this is a good dude right here. Why? Because he's, he's doing his best to honor God. He wants to know more. This is good stuff. So Jesus looked at him and he did what? He loved him. He loved him. He didn't love what he said. In fact, Jesus knew what was about to happen. He knew the brokenness that existed in this man's life, and he what? 
Now, here's the first part, man. Here's the first part of this. Listen, Jesus knows the broken stuff in your life. He knows the sinful stuff. He knows the dirty stuff. He knows the stuff that you don't want anybody else to see. And guess what he does to you? He still loves you. How awesome is God? Now, back to the story. Jesus looked at him. He loved him. He says, there's one thing you lack. He said, I want you to go and sell everything. And I want you to give it to the poor. And then you will transfer your richness from here to a different account, a heavenly account, that it will be waiting for you. It will accrue interest. It will be better than anything you've ever seen or experienced before. But I want you to do that. Then come follow me. There's the invitation. Jesus says, follow me. At this, the man's face, and he went away because the man had great Here's an interesting question we all need to ask ourselves because we can all relate, maybe even more so than what you think. Here's a guy we would call a good dude. He was blessed with a lot. We look in the mirror, we say, I'm a pretty good dude. And we've all been blessed with a lot. He loves God. And he goes to Jesus He says, hey, what do I got to do to have eternal life? Like, hey, what do I got to do? And Jesus says, I want you to go and sell everything that you have. Follow me, and we're good. And the guy went away sad because he had a lot of wealth. What would make a guy who loved God all of a sudden change his mind when it came to following Jesus? What would have to happen where he would be like, I can't do it? I'll tell you what happened. The cost of following Jesus was too high. The cost of following Jesus was too high. And the reason I'm highlighting this story this morning is because following Jesus is for everybody. But not everybody chooses to follow because the cost is so high. But purchasing our freedom, that cost was even higher. What is it that Jesus asks us to do? He asks us to deny ourselves Pick up our cross and follow him. Jesus says, if you want to be great in my kingdom, I'm not inviting you to a life of comfort. I'm inviting you in a life of servitude. I'm not asking you to get comfortable. I'm asking you to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to all people. So do not think for a second, church, that what Jesus just said here to this man does not apply to each and every one of us. Because there is a good chance that during the course of your lifetime, God may ask you to move. Because he has plans for you elsewhere. You might be looking at that passage, go and sell everything you have. Go and sell everything you have. Give it to the poor, just give it away. And then come and follow me. Some of you might be thinking, that's extreme. Don't think for one second that Jesus might not ask you to do the same. Following him is an all or nothing invitation. The cost of following Jesus is high. Following Jesus is for everybody, but not everybody chooses to follow because the cost is high. And I just don't want anybody thinking, Jesus will never ask that of me. Oh, yes, he will. Would you follow? But in doing so, Jesus knew something, you guys. He knew something that this guy didn't quite get yet. Is that, yes, following Jesus cost you everything, but it's more rewarding than anything you could possibly imagine. I love the parable that Jesus gives where he talks about a guy going on a walk through a field. And he's walking by this tree, maybe he trips over something. He looks down, he's like, oh, there's a little, there's a divot there. And he digs up the divot, golf term, and uh, no more than I thought. So he digs this up and he finds this unspeakable treasure. And Jesus says that he went home, he buried it, went home gladly with joy, sold all that he had, bought the field so he could have the treasure. And what Jesus is illustrating is what it's like to follow him, what it's like to be a part of the kingdom of God, that nothing here on this earth compares to knowing him. Nothing on this world compares to following him and where he's leading. And here's the last part. It's not on your outline, but this is bonus content we got to talk about and I'll make it fast. Following Jesus 
leads me home with stops along the way to people who need him most. Following Jesus leads me home. If you've been a follower of Jesus for five minutes, if you've been a follower of Jesus for five weeks, five months, five years, 50 years, you have been on a journey of Jesus leading you home. And there are stops along the way he's asking you to visit where people need him most. If you need him most today for whatever is going on in your life, he's here. He's with you. If we can be the hands and feet of Jesus, please go back to the place. Please come grab me. Be the hand, grab the person next to you. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Just love you. He's going to ask us to make stops along the way to people in the places who need him most. But ultimately, he is leading us back to the Father, to the very thing that we were created for. He is leading us heavenward. How cool is following Jesus. Lord God, thank you so much for my friends here today. Thank you for a chance to open up your word. Thanks for the opportunity to, um, to talk about following you. We love you, Lord. Help us follow you faithfully. And for the journey you have in front of us, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I just have to say this in 10 seconds or less. We didn't even scratch the surface of what following Jesus looks like. We didn't even make a dent. Darren's going to help you. But that's the reason we invite you to get in God's word. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels will in greater depth show you what it looks like to follow Jesus. Acts, Romans, Ephesians, Philippians, Paul will show you what it looks like to follow Jesus. Keep pressing into that. Keep pressing into that. And uh, let's go. Have a great week, everybody.